Greetings, dear ones. I am Crime of Magnetic Service. There would be those who would say this is inappropriate. You cannot have a human being pretending to be God. You cannot have a human being sitting in front of an audience pretending to channel. It is not appropriate. There would be those who would say that. And there would be those who would say that all my partner's life. And into the next. And they are not the ones we are speaking to now. Bless them for their lives and for their paths and for their angelic angelness. For they are just like you. No. There are those who would say this is what it appears to be. And the difference is this, that some of you have developed truly an interdimensional sensor. One that is going to be developed even more in these times, in this age. Your discernment sensor. To know of these things are true or not. I say to those who can see it, look at the colors right now. Look at the colors on the stage. For I am Cryon. I peek through the veil. I arrive in three dimensions. And I am using the free choice of the human being to give you these words. I am using the free choice of the humans in this place to hear them. I am using the free choice of those later in your in your purview later to tune into this with their free choice. I'm using the ability of synchronicity of those who would read this on the page. And all of that is with free choice. All of that is with a human deciding to do it. From the human who sits on the stage to the human who listens, all of it is free choice. This is the way spirit works. It honors the human being. I am in love with humanity. I am aware of what we would call the rules here. And the rules are that we would not present anything that was not appropriate for the energy of humanity. The rules are that we would never present ourselves in fear anywhere. The rules are that we will tell the truth with integrity. There would never be anything to manipulate any human being, but we would love them. So if anything was changed, it would be their, their hearts. We are allowed to wash your feet. We are allowed to hold your hand. We are allowed to touch your shoulders and your heads interdimensionally. And that means that if there are those here who wish not to feel anything, they won't. And that honors a human being. And that's the way it works. And that's the way it always has. Now, for those of you who have come for a message, for those of you who have come to feel this family that we present as entourage, I'll tell you, it is here. This is for you. A message that has not yet been given in this fashion is upon you, my partner. And I've given you the hints today of the subject, and I've also given you the hints of trying to explain the unexplainable. So this is for my partner. Clear your head. Do not come too far to the veil. For you need to stay in three dimensions in order to present this properly. For you will be the teacher today of the unteachable as we start a process of teaching about the healing of a human being. It is a new energy in which you sit. What you call the jars of your spirituality, a metaphor for what you can fill your, your very soul essence with, is changing. Refilling itself with a newness. Some of you will know it before you leave this day. Some of you will say, this was different. Oh, this channeling was different. Did you feel that? Some will say, this is real. Did you feel it? I will tell you this. I am cryon. I was cryon yesterday. I will be cryon tomorrow. And the only difference is the energy that you sit in allowing you to feel more. What has changed is you. I want to 
to take a moment and honor the sweetness of the moments that are upon you. This specific message will never be spoken again. Those who sit here with each other will never be in this assemblance like this again. It is unique. No time in history will it repeat itself just like this. That's how unique it is. You might say that all things on the planet are that way. They have a unique stamp upon them. And you'd be right. And yet within this puzzle, there is something that you don't understand. As unique as it seems, there is a whole body experience that is taking place here spiritually from my side of the veil, which is always there. Hard to explain. As unique as you say it is, you can take this uniqueness out the door with you. And interdimensionally you can call upon it again and create it whenever you want. The energy that is here in this moment, the colors that you see, what you are feeling now as you understand and realize this is indeed a message from the other side. This epiphany that some of you may have today is repeatable. All you have to do is sit down and you can create it again. That is the power of spirit. That is the power of God in you. What a sweet thing this is. I wish to tell you about the human, the human body. I want to give you pieces and parts that my partner has taught about for some time, but never through channel. I want to give you some indications of what you can do. I want to give you some, some realities of what is and what is not. Hardest thing for a human to do is to heal themselves. Ask a healer. <laughs> oh, the healer. It can have many come and sit in front of them. And they can walk away healed. Oh, they can pour the energy into others. They're disconnected, you say. They can give the visualization. They can bring them to their own epiphany. Cellular structure can switch. Miracles can occur and they will get off that table different than they came in. And then the healer will go into the other room with the pains and the aches, sometimes even the disease. And they cannot heal themselves. They can. But they just don't know the process. Oh, they think they do. They're going to use the same process that they used on the other human being, and that's what's wrong, you see. For the first time, they may have to turn internal. They have to go into their own cellular structure, and this is what's missing, and this is what the hard part is, and this is what I want to discuss. The human body is interesting because for you as you sit in the chairs right now feeling perhaps your heart beat I'll tell you what is there it is a piece of biology which is you but it seems to be often in the other room what I mean by that is there is no communication it is not designed to communicate with you the only thing it has is pain. That's all. A one-dimensional aspect given to you early on so you would be able to survive. So you'd know if you were stepping on a hot coal. So you would know if something was, was hurting you, poking you, to get away from it. Pain seems negative. It seems to be a challenge. It's one of your greatest gifts that keeps you out of trouble. It alerts you if something's wrong, and that's all you have. It is a one-way communication, and the body gives it to you when you need it. It is actually two-dimensional, you might say, and you don't, be, you, you don't have an ability to, to be in a place to talk back to it. It just is what it is. That's all you've got, pain. And many of you accept that. Oh, that's the way it is. 
What am I going to do? The body cannot speak to you, you say. Cannot tell you anything, you'll say. And as proof of this, I give you this scenario, which happens so often, even to light workers. Does it make sense to you that an enlightened body like you have with the complexity that it has would be silent in the face of a killer disease that is ramaging through your body? It happens every day. I speak now about the disease which kills more of you in North America than any other disease known to man, and that is cancer. And it's not something you catch. It is something your body develops through irritation. It is a runaway of cells. Uncontrollable it is through your own immune system. Uncontrollable it is through all of the white blood cells sent to the place where it's happening. And here is the story that you don't like to hear. You could be sitting in the chair right now and have it raging through your body and not know it until the body decides to give you pain. Then sometimes it's too late. And you might look at this whole system and say, what kind of a system is this? The body is so dumb that it cannot alert me to these things that are going on in my cells. And yet that is the low energy human being's body. What you came in with here. And therefore you turn, do you not, to others and their tests and their medicines in order to heal you, to document you, to find out what's going on. And that's what it must seem like. And I'm here to tell you it is not that way. It never has been that way. You have always been able to go to certain levels in order to see what is happening inside, and few do. So I will start easily. I'm going to tell you what is available in three dimensions, not an interdimensional energy, simplistic things that are available now, even to those who don't even believe it. Always has been. We speak now about what you loosely have called kinesiology. And there are many kinds. <clears throat> and there are many ways. It is a system of feedback from the body to you in three dimensions in real time. It has always been there. It is looked at in certain circles as voodoo. Can't be so. There's got to be another energy involved. It isn't correct. It isn't right. Don't do it. Well, you use your own discernment on that. Let me tell you what's going on. Your body is ready to talk to you right now. If you will go to the process of what some have called muscle testing, and you can do it in so many different ways, you can do it through pendulums, that'll get you in trouble. <laughs> you can do it in finger testing. You can do it alone. The more you do it, the more the body will respond. The better you get at it, the more you'll know what is going on. You start asking it questions. Give it yes and no. Make it easy. Don't ask for complex answers. Ask it for yes and no's. Ask it for these questions. Am I allergic to this? Yes or no? Should I be eating this? Yes or no? Should I go here? Should I go there? Regarding biology, what's happening in the various places in your body, perhaps, that don't feel comfortable? Should I get a blood test? <laughs> yes or no? This is the body knowing what you know because it is you. Knowing what medical science can do because it is you. But finally able to speak to you if you let it. And in 3D and in simplicity. And it's been available from the beginning. If you do it, if you would do this, you could save your life. Because since the body is so non-communicative, as you see it, you start asking it questions, you develop a relationship with it. That's in 3D, that's easy. Let me give you two other ways you talk to your body and your cells and they talk back. And you're not going to like this because both of them, both of them are, they're very difficult, humans don't like this. 
The body listens. Did you know that? And it responds. If it can figure out what you're trying to do, it'll cooperate. I should say that again. There is an innate intelligence in your cellular structure that we're going to talk about in a moment that knows what you're trying to do. And if you actively go there and do it, it will celebrate and it will cooperate and you'll get the results you want. Number one, diet. <laughs> oh, you know you don't want to do that. Now I'm not talking about stopping eating. I'm talking about putting the correct foods for your cellular structure in your body. And in the process, balancing weight. What a concept. Well, what foods are those, Cryon? Well, why don't you ask your body? Because <laughs> it'll tell you. When you start any kind of a new diet, and you start to see the results of it, I want to tell you, you just had a full body experience. Questions and answers. You got communication. The body got it. Oh, I see what he's eating. Oh, I see what she's eating. Oh, here's more of it. I see what they're trying to do. Let's go there. Let's do it. Health comes up, allergies go away, weight comes off, the body is cooperating. I'll give you another one. This is even worse. Exercise. <laughs> if you begin a protocol, believe me, the body knows it. <laughs> the first thing it does is it communicates to all of the other cells that something is very different. I might not like it at first, because it's hard. But then what happens is a euphoric experience. How do you explain this? That the more you exercise, the more the body wants you to exercise. How do you explain that? And some of you know what I mean. And if you don't do it, the body will tap you on the shoulder and say, you know, it's time, we really like that. Let's do it again, let's do it again, let's do it again, let's do it again. Because the body understands what's going on. It's developing health. It's creating balance. This is feedback. It's always been that way. How basic can you get? That's 3D. But it needs to be shouted from the hilltops for some of you to survive in this room. It needs to be shouted in this room. Even if you don't become esoteric, how about you do that, even in 3D? Because if you do, you'll last longer. You'll be here longer. Our light will intermingle with yours and you can stay and make peace on this planet. Do you understand what I'm saying? You think this is a, a favor that crime gives you. Here's some information that'll be really nice for your slim and trim body. It is not that way at all. We want you to stay. We want you to stay. We want you to stay. Um, I would not give you the next information if that were not so. The next information, oh, this is hard. Here it comes, my partner. The unexplainable explained. <laughs> I'll now take you into the woo-woo. Interdimensional healing. Unbelievable. The next step. The one that this energy will support, you're going to start seeing things unexplainable. Oh, they'll call them miracles. Some of the things I'm going to tell you right now will not be proven for a hundred years. Because that's how long it's going to take for some biologist somewhere to see the lineage of your family and what you did about it today. We're getting spooky now. Number one, the mechanism involved. My partner touched on it today and he didn't even know what he was doing. Every piece of DNA has a field around it. Every piece of DNA is next to another piece of DNA. A field surrounds a field, surrounds a field. I'll tell you what that does. It creates a oneness of consciousness. Have you ever wondered why it is in the esoteric world that you can speak to your body as one when there are trillions of pieces of it? In the DNA is a spiritual complement. In the DNA is a piece of God, a piece of home. In the DNA there is a quantumness. In the DNA, as my partner said, there is conscious, intelligent design. 
field that is around it has been proven by science is interdimensional. One piece against the other against another creates an interlocking, overlapping interdimensional field that has one address to the universe and it has your name on it. What I am saying to you is it is a whole body experience. When you begin to speak to your body, you don't have to address your toe. And you don't have to address your elbow. For you will address all of it at once. It's all listening at once. Think of it as one whole body experience. And it's because the DNA overlaps. The fields overlap. And those overlapping fields create a larger field, which creates even a larger field. By the time you get trillions of them together, literally, that field is something you can project with focus, and it's called light. Meanwhile, it also serves healing. It is ready to listen to the boss. My partner touched on this attribute earlier. You don't believe that you can speak to yourselves. The truth is this, as taught in the very book that you're going to be studying tomorrow called The Journey Home, there is an attribute of teaching in the House of Green in that book which I describe now. And it is the fact that you have total and complete communications in an interdimensional way with this whole body experience, this field. You are it and it is you, but if you've never spoken to it, it'll go its own way. Trillions of pieces of DNA, you never even talk to them. You just hope they operate well. You're born into an energy and a culture that carries its enlightenment in its head, never understanding that every piece is enlightened. And therefore, you walk around in your head, hoping your toe works. Hoping your kidney works, hoping your heart survives, never even thinking you might be able to actually address it and change it. And it's there waiting for you all your life. Now I call this talking to the boss, the boss talking to it. The DNA waits for you to speak to it, your enlightened peace. You will call it your higher self perhaps, whatever you want to call it, addressing the cellular structure all at once and starting to change it. And this is where it gets complicated. This is where it gets complicated. Here you go. Okay, Kryon, how do you do it? What happens when you do it? How do you become interdimensional? I'm in 3D. These are all of the big issues. And this is the unexplainable. Now in this group, there are those who are on the edge of consciousness. It is not so in those listening, it is not so in those reading. I'm going to invite those to come back to 3D for a puzzle. We've not done this before. This is teaching in a way that is not necessarily the way it has been before for there's a new energy present. Here is what my partner is required to do, to give a metaphor in three dimensions which actually explains a multi-dimensional effect simplistic part of what he has done before but not complete and now he's going to do it you must understand this metaphor you must understand the paradox of time involved for you to move past this point speak to yourselves and make anything happen this must be at least recognized studied and assumed to be correct And there are two parts to it. You must visualize this with me simplistically. See it in your mind to understand. There is a train. The train is you. It is on a track which is your time. In your perception, this train moves along a track at a constant speed and it's straight as an arrow. You can see the track move into the distance it is there for you to watch disappear straight as an arrow. 
It is in front of the train represented as your future. It is in back of the train represented as your past. The train is very, very short. Only a few cars. There's the head, the torso, and the legs, the arms. <laughs> and the train moves slowly at this pace called reality. That's your 3D. Visualize that train moving in any way you want to right now. Now, from my standpoint, the interdimensional train is not what you see. For when I look at you, I see a train in a very, very small circle. The track is a small circle. So small is the circle, it's only a bit larger than the train itself. My purview, my ascryon description of your train is one that is traveling in a very small circle. Now get this very clear. What you see and what I see. For what I'm going to show and tell you in the next stage and what I'm going to show my partner is going to help you understand the un-understandable. Is going to help you to fit in to what I'm going to teach you in the next three points after I show you this. Let us say that you are going to speak to yourselves and you are going to do something to change them. Whatever it is. Let us say that as you do this it represents the metaphor of painting the track. Let's say it's going to be red. Because that sticks out. Here you are speaking to yourselves and you're going to make a change in your biology. And that change is the metaphor of painting the track. You have the paint on board. You're able to paint it a bright red as you move forward. Picture this. In 3D, what you're doing. You are starting to paint the track red. In your mind, in this visualization, in 3D, picture you moving forward, painting the track red. In your three dimensions, you can look back and see where you started to paint the track red. You can also look ahead and you'll say, it's not yet red, but it will be when I get there. You're painting a segment of it that keeps getting bigger and bigger the longer you live. That is your 3D dimensional perception of painting the track red. Now come to my side for a moment. Oh, I don't know if you're going to get this or not. This is beautiful. For what I'm going to tell you, this is beautiful. Oh, it's just a simple train and a red track. But listen, listen, this is so beautiful. From my perspective, in that tiny little circle, you started painting the track red and you barely turned around and the whole track was red in front of you and in back of you as far as you can see because it's in a circle. That's my perception. That's the interdimensional perception. You're not going to have that. You're still in 3D painting a little bit of the track red knowing when you started seeing what's coming never understanding that in an interdimensional way the track is completely and totally red. Doesn't mean anything to you yet. It will in a minute. Number two. There is an object beside the track. Perhaps the object is intent. Perhaps it's a, a signal of something. Perhaps it's manifestation. It's an object next to the track. And you create it. As you move along the track, you create the object. Whatever it is, don't label it. It is something special. Maybe it's an epiphany. Maybe it is co-creation. You did it. And there it is. And you create the object and you move past that object. In your perception, you can say, that's when I did it. And there it goes in the distance. And you have a date and you have a time because it's in your past. 
Interestingly enough, as you move along the track, here comes that object again. And you interpret that in your own way as saying, well, I must do this again. And so you recommit and you redo this or whatever it is you did to create the object yet again. And there it goes. A little while longer, here it comes again. You interpret this as repetitive consciousness of healing. Because in three dimensions, you are used to filling a jar little by little. Hoping there are no leaks. Planning for evaporation. <laughs> it's very three-dimensional. So you repeat things. You go at it again. You'll meet again. You'll ask again. Here it comes. Let's do it again. Feels good. Let's do it. Let me tell you what my perception is. You create whatever it is we're talking about in a very tiny circle and there's only one of them and you circle it and you circle it and you circle it. It's part of the track. It always has been. Only one was needed. In 3D, it keeps coming around. In a circle, only one. Listen. I'll now give you three attributes of interdimensional healing. Easy, more difficult, and oh my goodness. <laughs> Number one, the easiest thing you can do. But using an interdimensional plan and scheme. You think. You think. You think is our word given to my partner for slowing down the body clock. It is in a time frame it was designed to be. It moves with the cycles of the earth, the solar system, and the moon, and you know that. It's able to count years. It reproduces itself on a body clock that is locked into the environment that you are in. And it will remain that way until you change the clock. And you can. Interdimensionally, you are going to present to your body a visualization of a time when you were younger. Doesn't matter what age, what you are doing is presenting it with a puzzle. The puzzle is this, youth. Go backwards. And before the, the telomeres unraveled and reproduced a trillion times. Go backwards. And what this does, truly, is to put you into a situation where the clock no longer ticks at the same time frame. Now, let's say you're on the train. When you're going to start using and you're going to start visualizing it, you're going to start painting the track red. And you in 3D are going to look backwards and say, this is the point at which I started using. But there's something wrong with that. It's the paradox of the clock, is it not? Because if you're going to go backwards, if you're actually going to slow the body clock, the track has to be red behind you. I didn't, I didn't tell you it would be easy. In an interdimensional state, the track is red completely and totally. Your body got it. It's doing it. It has the ability to revert its DNA to a time before you even caught a disease. You think that sounds like healing. Ah, oh, that's the next one. You are doing things outside of three dimensions or even the possibility of seeing it in 3D. You thing is taking cellular structure back in time and placing it upon a body that appears to be older than it is. Now what happens is this. You stop aging. That's what happens. Oh, it doesn't revert. You don't suddenly become young. You stop aging. This is you talking to the body, taking over 
what it thinks it's supposed to do on a clock that nobody's told it about except the moon. And suddenly you're in charge. You doubt it, don't you? You don't think it's possible. Three interdimensional areas, easy, difficult, oh my goodness. Easy. And yet some of you doubt it. And you doubt it because it's not in 3D. I'll use this term yet again, reality. 3D shouts. But interdimensional things like the love of God whisper. And if you're going to hear the whispering, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to take the shouting away. You're going to have to disassemble, if even for a moment, these things. All right, crying. How do we do it? How? You've said, you've given us the train, you've given us the track, you've given us the red paint. You've told us what? How do I do it? And I will say to you, this is the thing that human beings doubt. They doubt. And that is your pure intent is gold to spirit. You cannot fake pure intent. It is the intent when you're on your knees. It is the intent when you're in trouble. It is the intent when you'll say, I'll do anything. Get me out of this. That's the intent. But you don't have to be in challenge. You can generate pure intent with your, with your heart, with your emotions, where you're ready to begin and say, I am doing it. How often do I have to do it, Brian? <laughs> I don't know. How many times do you want to see it go by on your track? The answer is once not good enough for you. Well, I'll redo it anyway. I'll do it often. I'll do it every day. My partner does it every day. And he's the teacher. He doesn't even understand that he doesn't have to do that because he did it with pure intent one time. In, yeah, in, our, pre in our, our purview, it's the small track. He did it one time and the whole track sees it. And always will. He can't undo it. Oh, he can dishonor it. He has free choice. Do you see what I'm saying? Repetition is not the key. Never was. The more interdimensional you are, the more you understand. Pure intent, one time. That's all it takes. If it doesn't feel right, go ahead and do it again. Won't hurt anything. That's the easy thing. That's the easy thing. complex the curing of a disease in your body to such an extent that it'll never come back ever you live in an allopathic world three dimensions if something is wrong you correct it you put a band-aid on it if something is wrong you give it another chemical that changes its chemistry so that it balances. It's all cause and effect. It's all cause and effect. It's all 3D. Interdimensional healing? I'll give it to you. This is difficult. You have to be so tuned in. Listen, listen, listen. Cancer is in your body. It's a metaphor. It's a visualization. Use it for someone else if you choose. So you don't bring it to yourself. Cancer is in the body. And you're wishing to heal it. It's in a circle. You don't know the circle you're in. You think you're on a long train track. There's a time when you caught the disease. There's a time when it got worse. There's a time when the body told you it was there. You got it all with chronicleness. You're in 3D, you know all the things on the track. And now we come along and say you can heal it with interdimensional pure intent. Pure intent, can't be that easy crying, pure intent. Can't be that easy, you gotta do things. I wanna show you something, I, wanna, I want you to go someplace with me even before we get any further. Are you aware that absolutely every spiritual property on the planet is one decision of pure intent? Every religion on the planet has you being able to be converted literally within minutes. Ask them. 
the religion you were born in, you can have a conversion, turn around completely if you say yes. If you wish, you can do it with Islam. It's all set up. You can take the Prophet's name, pure intent. Ask them, they will tell you. And in some of the religions, you must do other things as well. You have to climb stairs, go to school, wear strange costumes. But it all starts with one decision. In one of your religions, you can marry Christ as a woman. One decision, one ceremony, everything changes. It's the same. I'm telling you, your body is waiting for one decision. Yes, it can be that easy with pure intent. You have a disease? Okay. Now you're going to eliminate it. And so in this interdimensional state of pure intent, what you see is your cellular structure reverting to a time before the disease ever happened. You must think out of the box of 3D. You're doing the same thing you did with you thing, except now, now, you've got 3D proof. It's either there or it's not there. That's going to make it even harder, because now you're worrying whether you've done it or whether you haven't done it, whether it's going to come back. I want to tell you, pure intent will start painting that track in any color you want to, and the track will yell. It's going to take you back before you got the disease, before anything happened. It is literally rewinding that clock. To us, the whole track turns red. That means you never had it. I told you this wouldn't be easy. The paradox of time. You will always remember the day when you cured yourself. On the track when you started painting it red. And the disease, you hope it never comes back. We know it won't. Because you never had it. You understand the power of the healing of the human being. Do you understand what is possible here? Taking you back to a consciousness before any of these things happened, before it ever invaded your body with the inappropriateness of this. And one of the reasons it won't come back is because you never got it. And the other one, if you want to give it a protection, is that you've got a consciousness of you think. <laughs> That's difficult. Because then you're dealing with real world proof. They want to give you the blood test. They're going to tell you the, the facts. They're going to tell you the percentages of those who do and do not have remission. All of the words of the allopath. And I want to tell you, dear human being, you never had it. They're not going to get it again. It's not going to come back. It can't. Because you didn't put a band-aid on it. And you didn't change it. You never had it. And the whole track is red. That's hard. And the next one? <laughs> well, we hinted at this two years ago. And now we'll expose it. My partner, it's the hardest thing you've ever done. I'll paint you a picture here. It doesn't mean that you can give it correctly. There is incredible complexity in what you would call the system. Within this system, which is all of the potentials of every single human being on the planet, there are systems within the systems which you have called karmic groups. A karmic group is a group which comes in and interacts in a certain way. Not predestined, but predisposed. It's an old system. It has been with you forever. It puts you with other human beings in order to create energies, in order to solve energies, in order to start energies. It is one of the things we talk about that with free choice you are able to disassemble if you choose. But you come in that way. And when you come in that way, there is also a complexity with your biology. Because part of spiritual karma also has to do with genealogy. Now what I'm getting at is this. Is that there are predispositions built into your genes which are weaknesses. 
and a mother who has a disease often had her mother have the same disease and she looks at her children knowing that they may have the same disease and their children and their children and their children you would call it a predisposed genetic flaw creating a lineage of death difficulty challenge and now what I'm about to tell you is this you sit here in an energy that is like magic with pure intent listen to me if you have a genetic predisposition and you're about to heal yourself of a major disease when you accomplish it the genetic flaw that created it in the past will disappear and the genetic flaw which created it in the future will disappear to the degree that your existing children's DNA will change And this flies in the face of everything you've been taught. Where is the free will of my children if I change it? It isn't that way. You have to understand the karmic energy. You have to understand the family group. You have to understand why you're here. You have to understand so much more than you begin to. Don't pay attention to the rules. Listen, there is no such thing as a past life. It is a parallel existing life on a track that you have just painted with a color of healing. And when you do that, the whole karmic group, which you can see as concentric circles around you, also have a red track when it comes to that gene. Odd as it may sound, you are able to stop the karmic progression of the next generation and the next generation by what you do now. If you have existing children that have a predisposition of the disease because you carried it, they will have a healing too. It is a healing before they have the disease, not a healing while they're in it. Understand, this is one that reverts the karmic energy within their DNA. In the DNA, we have taught you there is the Akashic record of you, your karmic group, and all around you. This is what shifts. Does it make a difference in the DNA? Can you see it? Will you be able to actually chemically see this? And the answer is yes. <laughs> That's the power. That's the oh my goodness. I'll cry and I don't understand that. You just said something that doesn't make any sense at all. You said that it would change the past. I already, I have relatives who have died. What, are they going to awaken now? <laughs> How can you change the past by what you do today? And I will tell you this, get out of 3D for a moment. Look at what spirit sees. Spirit doesn't see you born and die and born and die. Spirit sees you all the time as an angelic being, a piece of God. What is it that you change in the past is your fear about it. It didn't happen. And it's not going to happen. And it won't happen. That's difficult. My partner's done the best he can to give you everything that I've wanted him to give. It's the paradox of the clock. It is not understandable in three dimensions. And I tell you, dear human being, it's about time you got over your 3 dness and started working with these tools and celebrate the fact they work. Don't figure them out. There will be those who will be able to explain it better than my partner. There will be those who will put it in books. Because it's time. And the energy will support this. And they will have the proof of it within themselves and their children and their fear levels. Blessed is a human being who takes this message to heart and believes it. For it is the way of it. 
and it will be seen and it will be known in times long after my partner is gone. And you'll remember this day when I open the door to tell you that these things are possible. And so it is time to depart. And I don't want to go. I told my partner years ago that as he sits here and does this, it stops his body clock. For he has one foot on the other side of the veil where there is no time. And so he said to me, let's just always be in channel. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad, my partner. And so it is. <laughs>